Protest. Think about this. Let's bring in Lawrence uh, from Brooksville, uh, Brookfield, uh, Wisconsin. Lawrence, Chuck Schumer holed up in his apartment instead of down in Columbia to try to negotiate or sticking up for those Jewish students as the highest ranking Jewish political figure in American history. He's a no show. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping uh, Chuck Schumer learned something from that moment. After all his criticism of Netanyahu, after all this extending an olive branch of the pro-Palestinian movement, they still protest in front of us. There's nothing that you can do as a measure of compromise yep. for these people. They want to get rid of you, period. There's no ne negotiating that. Yeah, what is it? You know, when you look at all these crowds, aren't you blown away? Aren't you all shocked? I mean, Charlie, how do you feel about this? Because what does this mean for the election? There are a lot of people that seem to be supporting these protests. Yeah, uh, well, you know, in terms of Columbia, it's an important reminder, don't ever say maybe if you mean no. And the idea that they're still negotiating right. is insane. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, the, to me, the most shocking part of all of it is that, of course, you know, you have Chuck Schumer, you have uh, Joe Biden. They still want these people's votes. They, they still are looking at them. It's all they them. care about. It's all they care about. And this is a great moment. Remember when, when Bill Clinton uh, ha had his sister soldier moment? This is a great sister soldier moment where J uh, Joe Biden comes out, Chuck Schumer comes out, says, we don't want your vote. Get out of here. He talked abortion yesterday. Yeah. He didn't bring up the main issue uh, of just uh, blanketing this country. Uh, Lawrence, what are you seeing in Wisconsin? Well, you know, Brian... When October 7th first happened, I was going to all these campuses asking these young people, you know, do you condemn what happened? Do you understand what happened? And a lot of them denied what happened there. Well, we scaled back our coverage on it because they have all these group chats and then they know who you are and then they have these event organizers that refuse to talk to you. And then they tell all the other students, don't talk to the press, don't talk to the press. Well, we were in Wisconsin and we found a university that was hosting this sale, this pro-Palestinian sale, to send money to Gaza. You would be surprised what some of these young people said. Let's watch it. We're here to really um, advocate for Palestinians, for Gaza. Um, we're activating, honestly, for just human humanity, humanity. There's also a lot more casualty on the Palestinian side than there is on the Israeli side. And I'm not trying to like compare the sides, but a lot of people are like, oh my God, October 7th, October 7th. But like, no, this is since 1948. If you really look at what's going on in Gaza, you can see it's just really inhumane. People are saying, well, but what about the Jewish community that is under attack as well? Um, the women that were raped, the kids that were put into ovens. I'm, wait, I thought that was... It was not, was, the UN came was, out with a report. That was denied, was that not denied? I believe well, it was. I believe it was. It actually happened. I believe it was, I thought that was denied. And I've talked with some well, of the I don't know the, the resources, well. I don't know the resources, but like I said, we're not here to condone any, no, no. like we're not here for violence at all. Do like, you feel like that you could separate the two and you say, hey, let's just talk about the humanitarian aspect mm -hmm. of it without talking about the larger conversation of Hamas using the people that you care about, I care about, as human shields. Like, does that concern you? It does concern me. It does. It's actually really unfortunate. And we're not, you know, we don't look highly at that we, at all. Because you've got to understand, you're all talking about Hamas, this, Hamas, this. We're talking about the civilians. Because that's where it started. But we're talking about this. But we're talking about right now. Let me tell you something, guys. If, if we can't even meet at a common ground, that women were raped and children were put into ovens in Israel. Well, they need to see the, the video, Lawrence. Then we can't have a conversation. They need to see the video. <laughs> we, There's we video have of a, this. I, Do well, they need, does the whole country need to see it? They're denying that it happened. They're saying that it was propaganda. And this is the same thing that we experienced when I went to the campuses after October 7th is that they, they're under this impression that this does not happen. Then I said, look, listen, if you, if you guys care about the people on the ground so much, why not take on Hamas? Well, they should release the hostages on their side. I go, what, what, what are you talking mm -hmm. about? Hostages in Israel? You mean the people that are part of a terror organization mm -hmm. that, that have been convicted? You want us to release them? You're putting They're them on prisoners. the same scale well, several of the things. innocent if, civilians? If you're paying to go to college, you should be able to go to college and feel safe on campus. And if you're going to protest, you need to know what this protest is about. Uh, yesterday, Sarah Carter was on Sean Hannity's show last night, and I was watching it, and she went, yep. went into the protesters and said, 
you keep yelling from the river to the sea, which river, which sea? And the girl couldn't answer. Sarah had to tell her. And then someone else was in the crowd denying everything that happened in Israel. We all did see the video. At Fox, we had the opportunity. The Israeli government came in and showed us the video of Hamas with their body cameras on and going into people's houses, innocent houses, killing the parents in front of the kids. There's that one video that I can't get out of my mind of the little boys covered in blood, their dad is dead, the mom comes home from work, and uh, they shot, they killed the dad right in front. He ran into the shelter and there was a bomb, they threw a bomb in there, a grenade in there, and he was killed in front of his two kids. You know, it's not a it's not a bad thing for children to have emotional responses to things and to be, uh, you know, operating on, on uh, off of emotion. The problem is that they're at a university where they're supposed to be taught humanity, supposed to be taught history, and they're not taught these things. So they're just they're completely fueled by emotion, and they have no idea what they're talking They've about. Been infiltrated. And then you wind up on uh, in league with a terrorist organization, supporting a terrorist organization. Right. Uh, we know also on campus these are, these kids are not college kids. A lot of them have phony yeah. uh, student IDs. They're sitting there in their late twenties, uh, and they've taken over the campus. And people are financing all of it. We saw a walkout yesterday at NYU downtown, and we see the faculty now involved mm -hmm. in it. Think about that: locking arms to protect the the crazy students, and if you're a member of the faculty, but not letting the Jewish professor on Columbia campus get in. They yeah. they took his key card and revoked it. It's, it's incredible. Meanwhile, what well, does guys, it mean? And, Go and, ahead. And, and, no, real quickly, Brian, I, I think it's also important that you have the FBI director that just did an interview yesterday talking about an attack on the homeland with ISIS. Okay, some of the propaganda that they subscribe to is the same propaganda of ISIS-K. So, I mean, we, we talk about them coming across the border and coming, you know, like they did in 9-11 on some plane or something like that. But the ideology that these young people are now subscribing to, they don't need to fly in. It's coming they from have my... homegrown people that believe internally now. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.